Hello and welcome to Hikes TV, Neil Eel again, um, and we've got Daniel on, so Daniel, great to have you back on mate, uh, I, I know we had you on over a week, some great uh, com, uh, comments and feedback on that, uh, it's been a bit nice of a have week, you. Nice not, have not, time a problem, Neil. not a problem Daniel, uh, it's been a bit of a week, I mean, we, we come, well, we'll, we'll touch on the 3-1 the uh, game against Charlton, and three. Mm -hmm. Three goals by different players, some crackers in there and all. Uh, what you take on that? Well, I think we've got to come out right and say it was a strong performance. I mean, you know, we've got to, yeah, you, you've got to, I mean, Charlton, as much as they were in bad form, you could tell they had good side with, with talented players. I mean, that number, I think he were a winger, he was number 17, didn't quite catch his name. Mm. But he were, you could tell he was a good player. So you had those good individual players in there. Um, and they appeared real low, but they just appeared really, really low on confidence. Um, and I think we took advantage of that. And that's the first time we've really done that at home, I think, this season. I think, you know, uh, a build up play fantastic. Devante, Devante Cole, especially, contributed towards that. Uh, Benson's goal shows that now we've got like those mm. those options uh, shooting outside the box. We've got a player who can, who can challenge the goalkeeper from 30 yards, which again is a big asset um and, and i think it's an underrated asset as well um in a team he throws a man at match again his build up and pressing play were good um i think a, one of the players that got really glossed over i think tom edwards i think he played absolutely spectacular yeah. um goal saving tackle in the first half mm. Um, and but he's is it were a really sturdy performance from him. He seemed to always back up his back up the uh, back up like Mads. And uh, I think Nick, I think he got behind the wing at that number seventeen play for Charlton. He got behind uh, Cadden a few times, and Tom Edwards did come in and 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 sweep up the uh, sweep it up. So hmm. it was good on him. Um, so yeah, I mean we have to put a bit of constructive constructive criticism in there you know the first half Charlton weren't they were um you know they did have a few chances um and we let them get behind um but they just weren't clinic they weren't clinical enough and I think it goes back down the confidence thing but I spoke to my pal after I spoke to one of my mates after the game and we, we watched the match winners I said how many times has teams come down to Oakwell last season we've had the majority of the chances yeah. we've got behind them uh, we got behind their back line. We're having we're, we've been unlucky, and then they've come away with all three points. So I suppose luck comes. Um, I suppose it comes round. In it suppose it comes round. I suppose, and we deserve a little bit of luck. Um, and yeah, I mean, going back to what I said, we needed a win at home, mm. and we got mm. it. And I I would argue we got it quite emphatically. So hopefully that's the start of you know the confidence at home is that's that's now it's now put back into the team and we can start getting a good run uh good run of results at home so good overall good overall yeah i mean i were impressed with performance like you said there daniel uh i think we've, we've been wanting all these fans and players as well from manager you know we're, we're all been wanting you know all win just to try and get back confidence is is a way performance at home and i think like you said, Vera, first half, Charlton, they have the chances, there's some decent chances. And again, Tom Edwards, a few saves being pulled off. One thing I were slight, if we slightly disappointed about were Jack Walton with kicks for going astray. But apart from that, if you're nitpicking on stuff, but you look at overall performance, what pleasing for me were three different goal scorers. Like you said, you've got a midfielder with a goal in him. You've got uh, Devante Cole, you know, build up player via Norwood. Yeah. You know, is cheeky back plate, but again, yeah. confidence is via, and it was great to see where it is before. We did probably try to have a play that in, but you know, if you're on a roll, if crest are away, ride it, take it, and move on. And for me, we're pleased to see that we had options off at bench, and we'll get on about yeah, uh, players yeah, yeah. in a minute. Players off at bench coming on and actually making a bit of a difference. And where is before last season, we weren't having that. And, Getting on about you know players make, uh, you know making a, a performance and making a difference. It's sad to see that Connor McCarthy is out for for a season uh, with a knee injury, and Matty Wolf is out for six weeks uh, with an injury. But I mean, what a massive blow is that for for Connor, for lad? You know, he's just signed for us, yeah. starting to break into the side, and 
you know, trying to get get into the side and bat and lad unfortunately picked up a nasty injury. Well, yeah, completely, completely agree, Neil. In all honesty, I'd only just picked up on this. We'd, we'd had a quick chat about this, mm-hmm. and I think it kind of puts things into perspective, really. And I know it's, I know we always, you know, the common line is, oh, well, footballers, they get paid a lot of money. You know, Connor's had to come come to the other side. You know, he's had to come down to Barnsley. He's had to, you know, he's settled in with his family, trying to get, you know, work hard in training to try and get those first team spots in a competitive team. And for him to get injured, it must be absolutely hmm. soul destroying for him. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we can, I'm sure you, 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 uh, you agree with this when I send him, sending best wishes if he is watching yeah. i hope yeah. he is <laughs> yeah yeah i agree with that i mean like i said yeah but I'm, you know uh i mean michael said it before like previous lives when he took into coal mining museum and stuff like that but like i said young lads coming in wants to play football and it's a big change like i said not just for him but his, his own personal life his family mm-hmm. life uh you know and settling settling in not just at football matters but uh obviously his own lifestyle and for that to happen in short space of time, he has been at Barnsley. It's it's just a shame, but it you know an injury like that happens to any player, regardless of where it is in career or season. I just hope, and like you've said, via Daniel, I just hope he gets well soon. But there's no complications, and he gets on a speedy recovery. And it's not long before we see him in a Barnsley shirt. Um, and like I said, that's all from people uh, like me, me and Daniel and everybody at Tax TV, and that'll wish wish him well. Moving on to the Fleetwood game, then Daniel. I mean, I think it's kind of rare to try and even mess about with side as, as such. I mean, I'd like. I mean, I've missed out on you know we're trying to get tickets and that, and there were only like eleven hundred available, and they went like hotcakes. And I think mean, that's testament for a amount of Barnley fans where we wanted to go and you know support this team because it's on the via we're on it kind of thing. Mm. I'd, I I'll just wish there'd have been a few more tickets to get a bit like I don't know what atmosphere, what can I say? Atmosphere what like at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. If you know what I mean. We were like over two thousand. You know, if it had been more available, we'd have, we'd have probably sold them straight away. Uh I don't yeah. know come back is. I I mean this is the difficulty of being in League One uh, League One, unfortunately, Neil. I mean we're even as the season ticket holder, I'm looking at like places like Markham and I'm thinking, is you know whether we're going to get tickets or not. Yeah. Um, I would have probably liked to see a further allocate, uh, further allocation. I mean, without not looking at how many how many fans Fleetwood bought, but I think the last time we played Fleetwood away from home, I think we took more fans than what they did. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, it's it's difficult. I would have liked. I, I, there's not. A, there's not. A, you know, a second that ever goes by that I don't think, you know, that I'd ever wish uh, for Barnsley fans not to get more tickets to an away game when they're in that de- in that sort of demand. Hmm. Um, I think the last time in Johnston's paint, I'm not, well, you were called Johnston's paint back then. Um, yeah. I think they, they shut one and a half of their standoff and then the, the, the is that happening again, Neil, do you know? Or... Uh, as far as I know, is that what were happening is that people were trying to get the... Uh, tickets for on on side, you know, for for Fleetwood. But what we're asking is that when you turn up, you need to take some kind of photo ID, proof of address to see that if you're half from Barnsley or if you're half from Fleetwood, where do you reside? So it was getting a bit messy. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah, stuff like that. I mean, police inside as well. I mean, we haven't got Fleetwood. No disrespect to Fleetwood and Mark and other you know uh, teams like that. We haven't got probably the luxury is to like what we have is in. The, the size of the stadium where we could accommodate it. If we'd have, like said, right, you're you're only allocated to, like say two thousand, and then basically come back and say, oh, we need another five hundred. Can you do it? Look at possibility of doing it, and you know what I mean. But I don't think I think they like I said eleven hundred and back with it. So many seats, so many standing. Mm. So it's it's a shame because, but I get where you're coming from. Well, it's a good point, but you mentioned I'm looking like now fixtures away in front and thinking mm. how quick are they going to sell out? What is our yeah. allocation going to be? You know what I mean? I mean, I mean I've mean, i got fixtures up here. We've got Fleetwood away, obviously. We've got uh, Exeter at home, Doncaster and Pizza away. But then after that, we're, we're going to be having such as like your Bolton, which uh, it's going to be a decent size stadium. So, you know, but then you've got yeah. to be looking at like beyond that kind of thing. And I think 
if you're not on it straight away, if you're gonna, they're going to go, you're going to miss out, aren't they? So it's a matter of being yeah. on it straight away. Kind it, of it, yeah, that's always going to be an aspect, unfortunately. And, and you know, I'm, in all honesty, have I found the ticket? Have I, uh, there is a section, There, I mean, there is a section of our sports base, and I know this, that goes mostly to away games and they do yeah. well. Uh, so they yeah. don't see they're not season ticket holders. I do I, I I'm trying to work it out in a way that I, so I mean with these sorts of things I usually try and you know look at solutions and be solution for and try and be positive about it and, and so every every fan gets gets an opportunity to get tickets. I think on mm. this case it's really, really difficult because what you're gonna end up doing is putting them on general sale first. Then people who don't, or people who go to the home games and the away games, will end up missing out on tickets. Yeah. So you'll end up with a, a really disenfranchised um, uh, sub, uh, part of the sports base that does that. And then you've also got the home, the, you've also got the home fans who've had season tickets, and then they want they and rightfully so want 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 mm. the pick of their games to go on away games, and then they then they'll miss out, and it, it's it, it's really difficult. I think as well what what what's we, we've landed Fleetwood on a on a Saturday Saturday afternoon, um, which basically and obviously as we know Fleetwood's next to Blackpool. Um, that's all. That's gonna be a you know. I remember going to Blackpool away. Oh, Blackpool yeah. away. We're always rammed when yeah. When I, so I suppose it's just one of them <laughs> games, and yeah. hopefully uh, you know. And, and another thing is as well that we need to point out. We're doing we're doing well, you know. And mm. Fleetwood are mm. doing well. Yeah. Um, which we'll probably get on to in a minute, but yeah. But yeah, it is it's difficult on fans. But I without without really thinking about it, I wouldn't know how to go about it. To the, so to make everybody happy because it's really because it is difficult. It is really difficult. Mm. Yeah, I think clubs done as best with what they can do, and it. I, I kind of get it. It's hard that clubs control as like uh, you know amount, but we're allocated kind of thing because obviously. You know, if we want, if club could go over and say, look, we need next another X amount, but if Fleet would turn around and say, no, that's it. Bounce yeah, that, that, that's know, it. Yeah. Kind of, and I, I kind of feel for them in uh, box office at, at Barnsley because they'll probably be get, like, getting quizzed and questioned and, oh, why can't I have this? But again, it's not, it's no fault of anybody at Barnsley. It's like, what, yeah, what this is what you've got. And it's like, suck it and see. So, yeah, but just get on about Fleet. But before we go on to that, uh, what, uh, I'm not going to mention anybody's name or not like that, but what a person who's been on social media on Twitter uh, went to a game. It was at it was in the pizza. It was in the Newcastle under twenty one game, and people what's been on Twitter will probably know that this person had been like ridiculed and that because of the disability. Um, only a young person. Not going to go into details, uh, male or female or age or not like that. But uh, the person in question, uh, we're rightly so, has been upset. Uh, she's approached club and, um, I, well, a few people from other outlets have told her to approach it and, you know, let the club aware, which they are aware, according to what I know. Mm. Uh, and she, but the person in question doesn't want to really attend any more games uh, at all. Well, and what, not just me, but other, what other people have told this person, is don't let people ridicule you for you know any disability uh, out like that. It's you know it's no discrimination. It don't matter what age, sex, mm. race, creed, or colour you are. There's no it should be stopping you from attending a football game. And if you feel Completely any agree. time that you're unsafe, you go and see a steward or anybody at the club, and they should be you know willing to accommodate you and that. So I just want to message that. I know this, over social media, I love what's going to be doing the same. But again, people that's got disabilities, it don't matter. You know, you still go and attend the game. Uh, I know a few people in Pontiend uh, what's got disabilities and that, but you still have a joke and laugh with him. You don't, you don't take uh, Mick out of them. There's no place for it. And if you have any kind of people that are taking Mick out of it, then it's, I'm sorry, but it should be you then who should not be attending football games because they're going to watch and support the club, not take the Mickey out of someone and bully them. That's what I just wanted you, to say about. Yeah, I think I just want to second that, Neil. I do, personally, I find it completely unacceptable. Um, it should, you know, as a individual that's always wanted to bring fans together, 
um, you know, and because as you're, you know, I've always had a belief that Barnsley is the heart. The uh, Barnsley Football Club is the heart of Barnsley. Uh, mm. Without it, we wouldn't be the town that we are. Um, and that it should be welcome to every, and it should be welcome to everyone. Um, yeah. And it's having a really um, <laughs> these sorts of, let's say, discriminatory behaviour. Um, it got mentioned in the fans forum mm. um, by uh, Ju- uh, I think it was by Julian uh, Julian Key yeah. regarding the wolf whistling of the stewards. Um, yeah. I'd just like to just say, I mean, you know, I'd just like to say. It's it is having these sorts of incidents are having a detrimental effect on the club, um, and this is sort of reputation that we don't want. I don't want it to be supporting a club that I don't want to be known for supporting a club that that that's, uh, that allows this sort of behaviour. I'm sure that the, I'm sure that the uh, the people the executives at Barnsley are uh, are on this, and I I'm sure they think the exact same as I do. Mm. Um, but it's just a bit of a. I'm just want to kindly say to anybody who's listening, can we please not engage? In, you know, it brings yeah. it bring it drags the name of the club through, yeah. through through dirt, and it's not, it's not, it it's is not just, accept- it's, it's, not it's just is not it? acceptable. It's not yeah. acceptable. Yeah. Right. So we'll get back to the game then. Uh, coming up, I've just got a league table up, and I'm looking at Fleetwood's form, Daniel. And they've drawn, 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 one, drawn. So, and they're 14th. So, when you look at that, I mean, you look at Barnsley's form, they've lost, drawn, one, drawn, one, one. I'm I'm, I'm quietly op- optimistic here for Barnsley, mm. in, in his away form as I've been away, for our expressing we've, uh, we have been. Yeah. I think we could go there and get a result. I think we could go there and probably win two one, and I don't know about the lineup. I, I I don't think I'd really change it much to be fair from Charlton game. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I can't think of a lineup change that would that I'd have um, in in there. I think when you look at the physicality of the look at the physical physical nature of excuse me Fleetwood and uh, yeah. how they try and break up how they try and break up counterattacks they've got a higher average fouls per mm-hmm. game than uh the most teams in the football and the uh, league one so I think that and I've I mean I've got just jotted few uh, just jotted a few notes together I think the key players in that's going to be like Herbie Kane James Norwood all played Saturday yeah. played very well so there's no excuse to kind of take them out of the team mm. Um, I think we might be a little bit mindful of of injuries or playing play, players that's got a few little niggles because I think, you know, again, I don't underestimate any team no. um, in this league. But you know, Fleetwood are Fleetwood by the looks of things. I mean, you can even look at it as saying they've drawn numerous amounts of games. But you can also say they haven't lost in eight. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you, you know you need to interpret you need to interpret that saying they're they're difficult to beat. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, you know you're not going to go 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 to their ground and get an easy ride. Mm. So yeah, I mean approach to approach games as we did against Cambridge, I'd say be cautious. Um, but then again, you know, express yourselves a little bit, press them, don't fear, and and you know don't be scared to uh, don't be scared to. Get um, how can I put this physical within the rules? Let's say. yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a good game this for Norwood again. Um, away, it's kind of you know I, I think Kitchen picked up a knock, so he didn't make it. Kitchen should be back, but I, I, for me personally, I put him on bench because I wouldn't want to mm. alter it. Like I said, via Tom Edwards he came in, goal, goal saving tackle he did uh, in box. You know, for so for me. I'd, I'd probably keep it as is, apart from any slight, like you said, any slight niggles or like that. Luke Connell, he'll be coming back. So there's going to be there's going to be a fair amount of options there. But for me personally, I'd get, yeah, I, I'm struggling to find who I'd like rest or you know drop yeah. for performance wise because I think performance wise they all did a job and they all they all played and they all stuck to the task what they, what were requiring them, Daniel, on that one. Yeah, and I, I, you know what, I, uh, my first initial thought when I was looking at the, 
looking at the possibility of what we're going to do with the team, I kind of thought this game's got Luca Coddle written all over it. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just yeah. his sort of game. Yeah. Uh, but then you can't drop out Herbie, who played really well on Saturday, and I think he, I think he just adds that slight bit, bit more than Luca than. Mm. Uh, then, uh, then Luke, uh, he, he, but they're both good players. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't. Nice idea, can it? <laughs> he's, he's a lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make, makes a change, doesn't it? Uh, from <laughs> previous does, yeah. seasons. Um, so yeah, I mean, good luck, good luck to him. I, I think they're good. I think we're going to have to switch it up a little bit in how we try and attack Fleetwood. I think yeah. the counter attacks are going to be a little bit difficult against these lot. I mean. They're, 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 we've gone on about the physicality, but they, they've been quite well known for neutralising counter attacks mm. um, effectively, um, which he uh, it, it does take out a, a quite big part of our game, especially when you've got like Cadden trying to trying to get forward. You've got Edwards. You you've got Edwards trying to get forward. Ed Benson's, you know. Mm. Um, I I won't I wouldn't be surprised, Neil, and I, I, if we see. Norwood and Devante try, using their using their physical uh, physical and uh, their aggressiveness, and you see Luca Thomas trying to get behind the back line and making mm. runs. Mm. I think that would be quite interesting to watch because um, mm. we know Luca Thomas is a quite pacey pacey player. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see. But uh, what's, what's your score prediction, Ben Daniel? Ooh, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for 2 1. 2 1 Barnsley. 2 1 Barnsley, yeah. I, I'm thinking back 2 1. I think there's goals in it. Like you said, Fleetwood, like what you said, they haven't, they haven't been betting like eight, I think it is. So, like, when you look at that form, they're drawing a few. Uh, Fleetwood and Barnsley, have your same comments below. Um, and again, it's all about opinions. It's, you know, let me know your thoughts. You might think, no, uh, fetch, you know, you know, H isn't back in if he's available or this or other. But again, it's all about opinions and going away at Fleetwood. For me, why disturb a, a winning team and a, such as someone like that, a team what put, you know, shifting and be played well. And it, at times it made it look pretty comfortable, even though it won't, because Charlton is still a decent side. So, mm. Daniel, as always, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate. Um, no, thank really you for appreciate having me. It. Appreciate it. Get you back on soon. So, everybody what's been watching, thank you. Uh, please like, subscribe and share. Over 9,000 subscribers uh, this morning. Uh, went on analytics this morning. It came up. So, thank you to each, everyone in you what's been subscribing. It does mean a lot and it does help out uh, for algorithm and stuff for YouTube. So, thank you, everybody, for subscribing. So, have a good weekend. Have a safe journey to Fleetwood. All being well, we can come back with three points. Uh, clean sheet to be all right, but we can't ask for too much, can we? So... One thing left to well, say. One step at a time, Neil. <laughs> one step at a time. One thing left to say. You Reds. You Reds.